head over to your local Walmart and grab a few sprigs of greenery. I placed the pool noodle next to the top of the planner and marked a line. Then I cut the pool noodle with a knife to the mark. After that, I placed the pool noodle pieces along with some empty water bottles inside the planter to keep everything in the center and weighted down. Then I placed the sprigs of faux greenery inside the holes of the pool noodles and fluffed it all out. Grab some pots, plants, and rebar from your local home improvement store. Start by placing a generous layer of rocks or gravel, then fill your pots with your selected plants. Once your plants are potted, begin stacking your pots. Insert the rebar into the bottom pot, making sure it comes through the drainage hole at the bottom and rests on the saucer. I've got an area on the side of my house that is just ugly with an old hose. Take some handles and also the base for a planter and I'm going to put these handles on the side. Go ahead and put both sides on and make sure you get them nice and tight. But we're going to flip it over because we need to drill some drain holes. Once we got these holes drilled, turn it back over and we're going to use some succulent potting soil. And then you can begin to go ahead and transplant your succulents over to this base. On the planter though, we need to drill a hole about halfway up. And that's that's how we're going to put the hose in. So we also want to put some drain holes in the bottom of this planter. Now the last thing we got to do is put some wood in there. That's going to hold this lid up. Once you got it, make sure you do two on each side. Make sure you also get that garden hose through. You're going to need six plain wood crates. I am going to use spray paint in three different colors. Once the paint is dry, I'm going to seal these crates. So I grabbed some two by two pieces of wood and I'm going to cut them down to size. Then you're going to sand down the edges and stain this. Now that the stain and paint is dry, it's time to lay this out and dry fit everything. Then using a drill, just add pilot holes and then two inch screws to hold everything together. Once everything is, is assembled, it's time to put it in place. Ran down to Home Depot and picked up some beautiful flowers as well as two of these different hanging baskets. I removed the chain from both of the baskets and ended up removing the insert from one of the baskets. I opened everything up, placed my flowers inside, closed it again with the top frame on the top, lined up the holes, and added zip ties to hold everything together securely. My next step was to add the lights. These are solar powered lights, so they'll work great when I use them outside. Once it was all wrapped and ready, I was able to just let it sit in the sun for a few hours so that it could charge up. I grabbed one basket and 10 of these wooden pieces. I set to work staining them using these easy staining cloths. Once they were dry, I set up two of the wooden pieces vertically and then I added the rest of my wooden pieces horizontally. Used some one inch nails and put those in place. I had purchased these four inch house numbers. I nailed these into place. The next thing I did to finish it up was to add some pretty flowers. First step I'm gonna do is start clearing out some of these big flat rocks. I gotta get the base ready. Next step is to take a small two by four and screet the area. That helps level the soil. I wanna make sure it is nice and level. Now it's time for the first block. Put that down, shake it a little bit so that it feels nice and firm. We're gonna actually keep doing this up and down as we go. Once you get that base done, put that two by four across and make sure it's level. Now it's time for some construction adhesive. We don't want to put too much on. We just need to make sure those bricks don't slide and break and fall whenever we put them together. And then I cut a nice big piece of redwood board that fits on top. I grab these from the hardware store and I go ahead and separate the roots a little bit and put some nice potting soil in. These pots will slide right down in and take the form of the cavity that we're putting them in. I scooped up this metal filing cabinet from Facebook Marketplace. I took it out of my van and I put it up on some raised ladders and I removed all the drawers. Then I'm going to come in with this rust paint that is and I'm going to paint the entire filing cabinet. Then I'm going to use my drill and I'm going to drill in some holes in the bottom. To weight it down, I'm going to be putting in two bags of pea stone gravel. Then I'm going to go to my yard and I collected all these old leaves. This is great because I'm going to fill up the bulk of the cabinet with the leaves. So I fill it up till there's about a quarter left at the top and then I fill that last quarter with my potting mix. Then I'm going to go ahead and plant in my flowers. 
Grabbed tin cans and a napkin for this brilliant porch decor. I washed three tin cans from the recycling, removed the labels, and scuffed up the surface with a wire brush. I wiped clean with a cloth and spray painted the outside of each can with Rust-Oleum paint and primer white spray paint. While that was drying, I spray painted some metal chain black. I set that aside to dry. I used a small drill bit to drill three holes evenly spaced along the top edge of the tin can. I drilled holes in the same spots at the bottom edge and the same spots again at the very bottom of the tin can. Then I cut the napkins into smaller pieces and cut around the birds. I painted outdoor Mod Podge on the tin can, placed the napkin pieces on, and sealed it with more Mod Podge. I did this for all three tin cans, then used a nail to poke through the holes I drilled to make sure the glue didn't close them over. I let the cans dry, 24 hours is ideal. Look for flowers in a multi-pack that can be split apart. Take your laundry basket and drill several holes in the bottom with a drill. Line the laundry basket with a burlap bag or burlap fabric. Start to fill the burlap lined laundry basket with potting soil. Fill to about an inch from the top of the basket. Cut the excess burlap from the top of the basket with some scissors. Starting with the second row of side basket holes, cut the plastic between two holes to create one larger hole. Then cut out the burlap from that larger hole to access the dirt. Take one of your plants and plant it in the hole by pushing it into the dirt behind it. It helps to use your other hand to grab the plant as it comes through the hole and press dirt down around it on the inside of the basket. Once you have the sides of your basket planted, you can plant the top. Time to run down to your local baker and grab a big old container of cookies. But even though those cookies are yummy, what we want is that decorative lid. We're going to measure it straight across and get about 10 inches. Lay out some cardboard and we're going to pick a bowl that's round for us to mark. Just go ahead and lay it on the cardboard and take a marking pen and get you that perfect circle. Now it's time to mix up our cement. Once we get it mixed, carefully lay it inside the bucket. You can see the consistency here is like some really good pudding. Now, once you get the right amount in, you're gonna go ahead and just shake it all up. Cut some strips of wood. This one is gonna be full 10 inches across and the other ones are gonna be four each. And then glue up the ends, lay it out and fold it in. We wanna make sure that all the pieces of the wood fit inside the circle. Take some popsicle sticks and some hot glue you're gonna lay this across the top. This is gonna to be our clamp that is gonna hold the pieces together while that wood glues dries. Flip it over, we're gonna do the other side also. Once you get these pieces on, it's so strong, it's time to go ahead and drill them because we wanna put these caster legs on there. All we need to do is take some hot glue, put it in, and all four wheels go right in there. Now it's time to take those wood and the wheels and we're gonna just shake it back and forth let it sink right into the concrete. Let it dry for about 24 hours. Go ahead and turn it back over after that 24 hours is up. We're gonna use a knife and we're gonna start cutting away the plastic. We need to get some air in there. That's what's gonna release our mold from the concrete. Look at that smooth, beautiful concrete. 